Hello everybody, my name is Ginger Powers, and welcome to Fan Fiction Narration. The thing about fan fiction, I've always had a fascination with it. People taking existing IP, making their own stories, providing their own twists to scenarios that may not have happened, but could have happened. It's always fascinating. You never know what you'll expect when you read fan fiction. And one story in particular, Break Through the Limit, a Dragon Ball Z fan fiction, Certainly one of the most interesting I've ever read. A story where Raditz becomes a protagonist? A weak character who only was in the show for like five, six episodes? Suddenly becomes one of the focal points of the entire story? It's crazy. But in fanfiction, anything is possible. So, I discovered the story about... Sometime last year, YouTuber was doing their own thing with it, but unfortunately their channel got terminated due to third, right, third party copyright claims. I won't go into details about it, but he's the reason I found this story. If it wasn't for him, I'd have never known about Captain Space's story, Break Through the Limit. Speaking of which, I'll have a link down in the description so that way you can find Captain Space's author page as well as his full story on fanfiction.net. So I've never, I haven't been able to finish reading the whole story. College has caught up with me at some point, but with this series that I'm planning on doing, I want to go through all of it. Every single chapter, which is based on what I've seen almost over 150. So that's what I'm going to be doing for this series. But I'm not going to stop there. In the future, I'll probably be doing other stories as well. Stories of my choosing, of course. But if anyone watching this video wants a favorite fanfiction story of theirs read by yours truly, I'd be willing to consider it. However, there will be some exceptions to this rule. Rule number one. No sex. That's given. You're not going to get me reading smut on this channel. And M-rated fix will have to be approved by me first. I'll be the one determining whether or not it's okay to read. But yeah, that's really the only exceptions to the rule for suggestions. Other than that, feel free to suggest. If I get around to it, I'll be sure to credit you. As for a posting schedule, I'll try to post one episode a week with one episode usually consisting of around two to three chapters of a story. I'll try my damnedest to be consistent with this posting. It Things may come up, vacation, college might interfere, but you'll, I will do my best. And... For this story, the music that I'll be using to go along with it, because who doesn't like music? Or even better, who doesn't like awesome music? The music that I'll be using for this series comes from the Prime Kronos' YouTube channel. They've got songs from, they've got music from uh, studios like Two Steps From Hell, Audio Machine, maybe Hans Zimmer? I'm not entirely sure. But you'll find something you'll like in there. It makes the story a lot more entertaining. And... I think it goes without saying, I do not own the music, or the story, or the IP that goes along with it. Dragon Ball and all of its other properties are owned by Toei Animation, Shueisha, Fuji TV, Akira Toriyama, maybe Funimation, I'm not sure how this works. Support the official release. As for the fanfiction, it is written by Captain Space, so please follow him on fanfiction.net, support him. If you like the story, favorite, review it like it, love it. So, without further ado, just sit back, maybe read along if you want to, and enjoy Break Through the Limit, a Dragon Ball Z fan fiction, written by Captain Space and narrated by Ginger Powers. Let us begin. Don't stop, don't stop, we are in luck now. Don't stop, there's so much to be
Note from the future. Writing quality has improved tremendously from when I started this, currently on chapter 76. Even further in the future, me has some more to say on this subject at the end of the chapter, but I just thought I'd put a quick note here. Six! The announcer shouted. It was the final round of the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. The audience had fled. The stage lay in ruins, and one contestant, the reincarnated demon king Piccolo, lay unconscious at the bottom of a crater half covered in dirt. Seven! The other fighter, Son Goku, the world's most powerful martial artist, stood triumphantly over his defeated opponent. Once again, he defied the impossible, overcoming all odds, even surpassed the guardian of the earth. He was battered, his training uniform shredded, <laughs> but the smile never left his face. This was, after all, what he lived for. Eight! Goku's friends, standing behind him, all joined in the count, as if this would mean that in some small part they had helped defeat Piccolo. Nine! The count was almost a formality, really. No one expected even the toughest fighter to get up after an attack like that. Ten. With blinding speed, Piccolo leapt to his feet, opening his mouth and unleashing a brilliant yellow wave of energy. It shot through the air in an instant, piercing right through Goku's shoulder. Everyone froze in horror, unable to believe their eyes. But their despair lasted only a moment. Goku's image, pierced by the beam, faded and vanished. The warrior had dodged at the last second, leaving an afterimage. Goku suddenly appeared right in front of Piccolo. Nice shot! You almost had me there. He grinned as the de He grinned as the green demon took a stumbling step backwards in shock. Now let me show you how it's done! Goku drew back a fist. Piccolo lunged forwards, but the battle had worn him out. He was slowing down. Goku slipped through his defenses and rammed a punch into the side of Piccolo's face, putting all of his ki behind it. Goku felt bones crack in his opponent's jaw, and the demon was sent flying. He crashed to the floor several yards away. Hey, uh, announcer? Goku asked, pointing at Piccolo's prone body. Is he out of bounds? Uh, oh, the tournament! The announcer, still clutching his microphone, wiped sweat from his forehead and scurried over to the unconscious competitor. Uh, well, it's hard to tell. There's not much of the ring left, after all. But I'd say... He looked back and forth for a bit. Yep, Piccolo is out of bounds. Goku wins the tournament! The group standing behind the stage ran up to the victor, cheering and congratulating him. Nice job, big guy, said Bulma, Goku's oldest friend, patting him on the shoulder. Standing apart from the others, Kami, the Earth's guardian, shook his head in disbelief. A guttural cry split the air as Piccolo's eyes snapped open. He sat up, one hand holding his aching jaw. Phew! He stared straight at Goku, who immediately raised his guard. Will you just give up already? The spiked-haired fighter asked, moving in front of his friends. Or are you back for more of the same? He tried to focus whatever energy he had left. He knew this monster wouldn't care for the rules of the tournament. Piccolo grunted, standing up slowly and painfully. You! How did you defeat me? I... I am the great King Piccolo. You are a mere human! You are nothing to me! He snarled. I cannot accept this. This will not stand. I will return even stronger, and you will suffer! He clenched his fists, shaking slightly as he tried to summon up the strength to fly. He could barely manage that. Continuing the fight was out of the question. One of Goku's allies stepped up from behind him, a bald warrior with a third eye in the center of his forehead. What are you talking about? You're not just going to leave. Tien turned to Goku. Finish him! You're the only one who can, or he'll just return to kill more people. But Goku shook his head. Get out of here, Piccolo. I've beaten you twice already. You should learn when to give up. Fool. Piccolo took off, and within a few seconds, he vanished beyond the horizon. Tien shook Goku by the shoulders. Goku, are you crazy? You heard him. He's just going to come back and do the same again. I'm not so sure. Goku brushed Tien off of him. Ever since he was reincarnated, he hasn't seemed as bad to me. I mean, I haven't actually seen him kill anyone. He shrugged. The first King Piccolo destroyed an entire city. This one seems more angry than evil, really. And besides, if I had the chance to show mercy and I chose not to, wouldn't that make me just like him? But don't worry about it. I'm sure Goku was interrupted as Chi Chi tackled him embracing her fiance. Oh, Goku, I was so worried. You were fantastic. That was amazing. Let's go get married. We'll have a house ready and everything. We'll have kids, family, and... 
over a hundred miles away. Piccolo stood motionless in a vast empty plain. The anger was building inside of him. It was impossible. A human defeating the almighty demon king at his strongest? It simply went against everything he knew and believed. He couldn't contain it anymore. Piccolo roared his anger to the wind, releasing all his power outwards. A raging storm broke out over the entire continent. Miles away in East City, windows shattered. Babies woke up screaming. And back on that island, where a group of friends stood, having just witnessed the fate of the world being decided, all felt a chill run down their spines. Primal fears passed over the group. Fear from the darkest corners of the mind. Fear. Fear of nameless things that lurk in the shadows. All but one. One who stood above the rest. One who was not of this world. His kind had no fear of the terrors in the night. Half the galaxy trembled at their name. And soon, so would Earth. Five years later, Piccolo stood atop a cliff, surveying the devastation around him, a result of his intense training. At first, his plan had been to create a devastating new technique, one which would destroy Goku in one attack. But he had since contemplated the speed Goku had dodged his surprise attack with, and the strength he had countered with. Besides, he already tried creating a new ultimate technique, and at the Budokai, that too had failed. No, to defeat his opponent, he would need to be stronger, faster, and tougher. So he had trained his body into the ultimate fighting machine. He was the most powerful being on the planet, and he would crush his enemy with ease, like stepping on a bug. All of a sudden, something caught his attention. I sense a great power, coming closer. He turned to face the approaching key slowly. Is it Goku? If so, he's been training harder than I expected figure appeared in the sky, flying towards him at incredible speed. No, it, it's not. Piccolo muttered to himself. Then, who? The approaching figure landed. It was a tall, muscular man with knee-length, untamed hair, wearing strange armor. He had some kind of device over his left eye. Hmm. You are not Kakarot, he said. And who are you? Piccolo demanded. Do you have business with me? One does not deal with insects, the stranger replied with a grin. One simply crushes them. Piccolo growled. If you're looking to die, keep talking like that! <laughs> Quite a temper you have, the visitor said, tapping a button on his device. Huh? Power 536. I wouldn't have thought such a being could exist on this little planet, besides Kakarot, of course. He was visibly taken aback by the reading, but quickly shook off his unease. Still, you are no match for me. What? Piccolo yelled. What? What? Piccolo yelled. Do you have any idea who you're talking to? The other snorted. <laughs> Do I care? There was a long silence. Piccolo stood silent, staring down the stranger, who returned his stare with a smirk. And Piccolo smiled back, his confidence returning. You sure think a lot of yourself. He hurled his cape off, and his turban followed. Both hit the ground with a heavy thud. The stranger took a step back, surprised. What? He hissed, incredulous. Your power just, just jumped to 900. Well, it makes no difference. You are nothing to me. But Piccolo ignored him. If you won't tell me who you are, or where you come from, I'll just have to beat it out of you. He flexed his muscles, settled into a low, wide stance, and gritted his teeth. The wind picked up. Veins throbbed all over his body. The stranger began to sweat. What, what is this? What are you doing? Your power level's rising again. Now it's over a thousand. A faint blue glow appeared around Piccolo's body. How are you doing that? Answer me! Then, as suddenly as it has begun. Then, as suddenly as it had begun. Piccolo relaxed. How do you like me now? He asked, baring his fangs. Eighteen hundred? Even higher than mine? The stranger said, shocked. No, no, the scouter must be broken! He clenched his fist. 
It's inconceivable that any being on this world is the equal of a Saiyan warrior. Piccolo shifted into a combat-ready stance. <laughs> you want to test that theory? A vein throbbed on the Saiyan's forehead. His eye twitched. You dare mock me? Prepare to die! He charged straight at Piccolo, but his fist swung at thin air. Piccolo appeared behind him and landed a kick to the small of his back. The Saiyan was sent flying, landing in a heap of the dust. He pulled himself up on one elbow, fear in his eyes. Piccolo stood over him, one hand crackling with energy. This was the first real test he'd had of his new power, and he was delighted. He was dominating an enemy who was many times stronger than he or Goku had been at the World Tournament. I was going to make me, I was going to make you tell me who you are. But I don't think I care anymore. He chuckled. <laughs> Good riddance. Retroactive note to all new readers. Hi there, and thanks for taking the time to read Break Through the Limit. At the time of writing this footnote, the story is 105 chapters long, and this first chapter, published almost two years ago, is... Wow, two years? Nearly two years, really. <laughs> That's quite a long time. A anyway, in my opinion, the quality of writing improves a lot from what is here as the story continues, and I become a more experienced writer. Also, I might as well put a pretty significant achievement here. This story is, at the time of its writing, example, recently got over 100 chapter mark, is the site's number two DBZ story worldwide by reviews. That's out of over 40,000, and I think that's pretty cool. So here's a big thank you to all my readers and fans. I even had some fan art, like the cover image, which always amazes me. People taking time and effort to bring my ideas to life is just amazing. I may be gushing a bit here, but I'm just pleasantly surprised at the level of success, of success I've achieved with this little story of mine. More gushing. TV Tropes page. Over 2,500 reviews, which is more than Honor Trip, as unlikely as that sounds to me. An offer to make a comic which may or may not eventually happen. I could give a summary of the story here, but, well, that's a summary at the top. Pretty much says it all. Heroic Raditz, of all things. Lots of changes to the timeline because of that. Enjoy. Footnote 2. A reviewer suggested that I do a table of contents. Well, I'm not going to, but I'm going to give a rough idea of how long each story arc lasts. Saiyan Saga, chapters 1 through 10. Namek Saga, chapters 10 through 19. Chapter 10 contains both the end of the battle with Vegeta and the start of the trip to Namek. Cold Family Mini Saga, I guess. A bit spoiler heavy to explain. Chapters 20 through 24. Android Saga, chapters 25 to 38. Countdown Saga, chapters 39 to 71. This was originally going to be just a few chapters bridging the gap between the Android Saga and Boo Arcs, and covering the events of a couple of movies, developed into the longest and the second most divergent from canon story arc so far. Psst, go figure. Boo Saga, chapter 72 to 91. Post Game Saga, another bridging the gap section, includes Battle of the Gods and among other post Boo things, chapters 92 to 104. The 105th chapter marks the beginning of the sequel, even further beyond. It's by no means a GT, but it contains some of the elements from GT which I think worked, or were decent in theory, but executed poorly. And it's partially some crazy ideas I had. I don't know how long it'll be. I've dotted extremely tentative previews throughout Break Through the Limit, but plot points are still extremely liable to change before it's finished. And the thing now I'm and the thing now I'm finally writing it may or may not actually look anything like those previews. But there you go. But I'm continuing to post even further beyond as part of the main story, just restarting with numbering the chapters from 1, with a chapter 0 prologue. It'll make it much easier for readers trying to follow the story. They can just keep checking the same one. Anyway, that's the story so far, and my plans for the future. Hope you enjoy Break Through the Limit. Captain Space. Raditz couldn't believe what was happening to him. Here he was, on this barren little world nobody had ever heard of, which Kakarot was supposed to have wiped clean of all life, and this green creature was somehow outclassing him. What happened to all that pride you had a minute ago? Piccolo asked, the cruel smile never leaving his face. I know you're a type, lording over lesser beings without ever facing how weak you really are. Those words stung. Raditz had been called many things. 
monster, evil, heartless. None of them meant anything to him, a warrior who had brought down whole civilizations on his own. But weak, that bit to the core. It brought back too many memories, laughing Saiyans, his own father, their voices filled his head overwhelming. To a Saiyan warrior, strength was everything. Without it, he was worthless. Saiyan growled and Piccolo saw something dangerous in his eyes. Then Raditz vanished, and a fist slammed into Piccolo's gut. He staggered back, gasping for air. Raditz pressed his advantage, hammering vicious blows into his enemy. A sweeping kick sent Piccolo flying backwards, and he landed on his feet, skidding a little from the force of the impact. He panted, trying to regain his breath after the unexpected assault. I am not weak! Raditz's chest heaved, his fist trembled. It was made worse by this being the first fight he'd been losing for many years. Piccolo spat out a cracked tooth, then grunted as a new one popped it in its place. Touched a nerve, did I? He asked, taking a step forwards. You're just like a child, lashing out at everything that upsets you. Enough! Raditz yelled. I will not stand for this! You will pay for this insult! He thrust his hand out, launching a brilliant beam of red-pink energy that detonated on the ground where Piccolo had been standing. But the demon was already moving. He was darting left and right as he dashed towards Raditz. Sane kept firing, sending out a volley of energy blasts, but none connected with their target. Within just a few seconds, Piccolo reached in and smashed his elbow into Raditz's chest. His armor cracked right in the center, and he stumbled backwards as pain exploded through his body. <sighs> he tried to shake off the pain, raising his guard to fend off any more attacks. But just as Piccolo was readying himself for another blow, his eyes widened. He turned to the left, staring off into the sky. Something's coming, he muttered. Just then, Raditz's scouter beeped. Eh? He tapped the button, homing in on the detected powers. One? No. Two. Combined power level. Almost 600. Closing in fast. But somehow, the screen thing had sensed them too. Could it be that it was possible to detect powers without a scouter? It was probably just a genetic feature to do with his antenna, perhaps. But who could be coming? On this planet, there were more likely to be enemies than friends, which meant Raditz's chances were getting even smaller. An unspoken agreement was made. Both fighters were curious as to the identity of the newcomers. Besides, Raditz needed time to catch his breath, so neither made a move. Soon. Two dots appeared on the horizon, growing into humanoid shapes, until finally the two arrived. One, a bald man with three eyes, touched down on the ground, having flown under his own power. And the other, with spiky hair, wearing an orange gi, popped off an odd-looking golden cloud which had somehow been carrying him. Raditz stared in shock. C could it be? It was! Kakarot! He explained, waving to the one who had ridden off the cloud. All grown up, I see. You look just like our father. Huh? Goku asked, scratching his head in bewilderment. Goku, who is this? Tien asked. What's he talking about? I, I don't know, but he's incredibly strong, and somehow, Piccolo's even stronger. No wonder I sensed this battle all the way from Kame House. You must have felt it too. Tien nodded. Right. Jiaotsu wanted to come, but I couldn't let him get into something as dangerous as this. What happened here, Kakarot? Raditz asked. Your duty was to exterminate the species. Did this green thing stop you? Piccolo, meanwhile, relaxed. It was only Goku and one of his friends, and though he was using his weighted clothing to hide his power, Piccolo could tell he had barely improved at all. That was what happened when you settled down and let yourself grow soft. I have had enough of this! Prepare yourself! And Goku, you're next! In an instant, both he and Raditz disappeared. Goku and Tien swiveled around, desperately trying to keep up as the battle between these two titans accelerated. Craters appeared in the ground, gusts of wind rushed by as fighters dashed between them, faster than their senses could follow. After several tense seconds, Raditz and Piccolo reappeared. Piccolo's fist was planted firmly in Raditz's face. <sighs> Piccolo's fist was planted firmly in Raditz's face, and the Saiyan flew backwards, spinning in the air from the force of the blow. He landed on his hands and knees, cracking the ground beneath him. Should we do something? Tien asked. Honestly, I don't know who I want to win. I wish I knew who it was Piccolo was fighting, Goku replied. And besides, they're so far above us, I don't think we'd make a difference. 
Piccolo leapt at Raditz to deliver the finishing blow, but Raditz rolled sideways at the last second. When it appeared to be a furry belt unrolled itself, and Raditz caught Piccolo around the neck with his tail, mid-lunge. He spun around, hurling Piccolo away. Piccolo somersaulted, landing upright, but had trouble keeping his balance after that attack. What the... the a tail? Goku stared. Just like I used to have! Raditz nodded. So, do you know who I am? So, now you know who I am? Uh, no. What? Goku was getting exasperated. How could you have forgotten me? Or your mission? Did you take a blow to the head, Kakarot? You keep saying that name! Goku scowled at him. My name is Son Goku. You're insane! It must be the result of brain damage. Goku rubbed his head. Okay, fine. I did hit my head, but I barely remember. I was a baby back then. Damn it all. That would explain it. Raditz clenched his fist. And you probably don't remember that you are not from this planet. You are a Saiyan, part of a great warrior race, he indicated himself. And I am Raditz, your older brother. No way, Tien whispered. Goku's an alien? Take it back, Goku growled. If I'm one of these Saiyans, why am I here? Well, you may not like the answer, Raditz grinned. We Saiyans are in the planet trade business. We locate suitable planets and sell them to rich customers. But first, of course, we must exterminate the native inhabitants. Adult Saiyans like me are assigned to the most difficult worlds with the toughest inhabitants. But first, for practice, our infants are sent to depopulate the weaker worlds like this one. Or so we thought, anyway. He glanced over at Piccolo, who was still coughing and clutching at his throat. Say, who is that? Anyway, I have no idea the inhabitants of the planet could grow so strong. Goku looked shaken. That's, uh, Piccolo. I'm not even sure if he's from this planet, but that's not the point! He took a step forward, discarding his weighted wristbands. You're telling me that my mission was to kill all the humans living here? I'd never do something like that! It's just plain wrong! He stepped out of his shoes and slipped his undershirt off, too, removing all his weighted clothing. Getting serious, Goku? Tien asked. Even at my best, I don't think I'm a match for them, Goku said, flexing and stretching. But I don't think there's a good guy here. I need every advantage I can get, no matter which who wins. Raditz frowned. So, you really are brain damaged. Irritating. But I'm not leaving without you. I suppose you've forgotten that our homeworld, planet Vegeta, was destroyed by a meteor. Our entire race, our entire race was wiped out. All but four, you included. We three recently found a planet that would fetch an excellent price on the galactic market. However, the locals are powerful. Even three of us together might struggle to conquer it. But four? Well, it's a good thing I remembered you. And while your power isn't exactly impressive, he tapped his scouter again. Even with that increase, it's only just over 400. I'm sure, given some real training, you'd be in good, you'd be in good enough shape to help us. I told you, I'd never kill innocent people! Goku shouted, get that through your head. I am not this Kakarot anymore. I'm Son Goku. Now leave my planet alone. Raditz was about to reply when Piccolo, having recovered, kicked him in the side. The pair of them immediately resumed fighting, each blow resonating through the ground and shaking Goku and Tien to the core. Now that's some serious power, Tien exclaimed. Raditz swung a quick jab, which Piccolo blocked with his forearm, sidestepping and countering with his elbow. Raditz ducked under it and jumped up towards Piccolo, who smashed his knee into Raditz's face. He followed up the flurry of punches and kicks, then jumped away to avoid Raditz's clumsy counterattack. He vanished, appeared again in time to punch Raditz in the exact same spot on his face, then retreated again, skidding to a halt several meters away. Raditz shifted to face Piccolo, trying to stand upright. <laughs> Damn you! I come all this way to this planet, and instead of my brother, I get you, you damn irritating freak! And when Kakarot does turn up, he's brain-addled and in no fit state to help me win. It's like the whole universe has it in for me today. Piccolo laughed out loud. <laughs> Piccolo laughed out loud. <laughs> Don't be foolish. You're blaming your own failure on luck now. He raised his guard, assuming to combat stance. Assuming a combat stance. You're simply outmatched. I'm stronger than you, faster than you, and even with your armor. It's clear you can't stand up to as much punishment as I can. My energy manipulation is superior to yours. 
My energy manipulation is superior to yours. You rely on that silly gadget to sense energy. And you're arrogant beyond belief. And if that wasn't enough. And if that all wasn't enough. I know your mental weak spot. Raditz snarled, shaking slightly. Piccolo grinned. Isn't that right, you pathetic weakling? Raditz roared, a faint purple aura flickering to life around him, and launched himself at Piccolo. Thanks for all the views, positive feedback, and support. I didn't really expect many people to read this, and while I know there are many stories that get a lot more views than this has, over 200 people reading my story in just a couple of days is pretty cool from where I'm standing. So, yeah, thanks guys. Q&A from Chapter 1. Is Piccolo kicking the crap out of Raditz on his own going to change things drastically? Oh, yes. Is Goku going to come up... Yeah. Is Goku going to come and team up, team up with Raditz instead? for the sake of being Piccolo? Well, as you can see from this chapter, Goku did arrive. We'll have to wait and see for what he does for the moment. He's just a little bit out of his depth. Have you decided on a posting schedule yet? I'm going to be posting the first few chapters as is, and when I can. No. Damn. <laughs> I'm going to be posting the first few chapters as and when I can on the 16th going away for a couple weeks, so I probably won't be posting anything then. Once I get back, I'll probably begin posting a schedule. Probably twice a week. That's all for Chapter 2. Stay tuned for Chapter 3. Kakra. Raditz hurled himself at Piccolo, screaming with rage. The battle, it could be said, was not going his way. Piccolo jumped over Raditz, who stumbled as he tried to recover his balance, then grunted in pain as he felt the impact of Piccolo's foot on the back of his head. He shook off the throbbing pain and swung himself around, his fist swinging for Piccolo. But the demon smiled and raised a hand, palm forwards, firing a beam of energy which exploded on contact, sending Raditz tumbling backwards. Raditz stopped himself in midair, breathing heavily, and charged again, blind to the consequences. Every hit he took just made him madder and less likely to try and strategize. He launched a mad rain of punches and kicks, and Piccolo dodged left and right, walking slowly backwards as Raditz's fury worsened his aim. After several seconds, Piccolo got bored and elbowed Raditz in the neck. He followed up with a punch to the stomach, and Raditz doubled over, gasping for breath. Piccolo kicked him away, then dashed around behind him before he could hit the floor, stopping Raditz's fall with his fist. They hung there in midair, until Piccolo threw Raditz to the floor. The same groaned, trying to stand, but failing. Piccolo turned to Goku and Tien, who were watching in horror. I'll finish him in a minute, he said, striding towards them. They readied themselves for a fight they knew they couldn't win. I've been waiting to fight you for five years, so this supposed brother of can wait. The ground shook as Piccolo focused his energy, preparing to charge the duo. Suddenly, he saw movement out of the corner of his eye. He, churned, he tried to turn around, but wasn't quick enough. Raditz had leapt up from behind, wrapping one arm around Piccolo's waist, the other around his neck. Never turn your back on your opponent, Raditz hissed, especially if they belong to the deadliest warrior race in the universe. He threw Piccolo over his shoulder. Then, as he crashed to the ground, Raditz landed on top of him driving his knee into Piccolo's back. He grabbed Piccolo's head in both hands and started slamming it into the ground. The third time, Piccolo lashed out with a fist. Then as Raditz flinched away, he took the opportunity to jump to his feet. Raditz started hurling key blasts his way, and Piccolo was hard-pressed to knock them all away. As the barrage continued, he kicked off the ground and from several feet in the air, charged a huge ball of energy. Oh, that can't be good, Raditz muttered then started running as Piccolo released it, smiling gleefully. He flew into the air, lifting his legs clear as the ball flew under him. Look out! Goku yelled. He and Tien had fled. He and Tien fled as the ball touched the ground, detonating with amazing force. Raditz glanced down at the crater. Phew, too close, he said, wiping the sweat from his forehead. Then Piccolo appeared in front of him and punched him to the ground. Raditz landed in a crumpled heap twitching slightly as he struggled to move his battered body. <laughs> no, I can't be defeated like this. 
His fingers dug into the dirt, and he raised his head, straining himself to try and get up. Piccolo floated to the ground in front of him. Still trying to fight, eh? You're determined. I'll give you that. He cracked his knuckles. But you have to realize there's no way you can win. Oh, and thanks for the advice. I'll finish you right now, just to be sure. He prepared to stamp down on Raditz's neck when something collided with his face. Gah! Piccolo staggered back, raising his guard. What the? Goku stood between him and Raditz, a grim look on his face. With a chill, Piccolo realized he'd seen this look before, from the memories he'd inherited from his father. This was Goku's face before he killed the original Deke. Ah. This was Goku's face before he'd killed the original King Piccolo. You step away from my brother, Goku said, preparing himself for what was to come. Kakarot, Raditz whispered. R K Kakarot, Raditz rasped, words coming slowly. Why? You rejected me. You said you'd never join me. Why are you helping me? Because you're family, the younger Saiyan replied. And besides, Piccolo's a bigger threat than you. Piccolo frowned. What do you think you can do, Goku? You've seen my power. Not even this Raditz can stand up to me. What chance do you have? Goku charged, completely fearless. I don't care how powerful you are. You have to be stopped. You're welcome to try. Piccolo yelled. Goku had almost reached Piccolo when he raised his hands to either side of his head. Raditz, I'll buy you time to recover. Solar Flare! He shouted. Piccolo recognized the technique in a fraction of a second ahead. Piccolo recognized the technique a fraction of a second ahead and turned to face the opposite direction, shielding his eyes from the blinding flash. You think that'll work? I know that trick. Piccolo was interrupted as he saw Tien standing in the same pose behind him. Solar Flare! Tien repeated. Piccolo hadn't expected it a second time, and this time he was blinded. Gah, my eyes! Damn you! He, his eyes burned unbearably, and he clutched at them, howling in pain. Now, Goku! Said Tien, jumping forward, jumping over to stand next to Goku. Goku cupped his hands at his side, focusing all of his key. As Tien raised his hands in front of him, forming a triangle, and tapped into his life force for power. Kame! Kame! Tri beam! Hya! They shouted in unison as twin beams, bright blue and yellow, burst forth and crashed into Piccolo, sending, the sh sending out shockwaves for miles around. Raditz, struggling to his feet, stared wide eyed. What the? They could focus their energy to one point. Their combined power is over a thousand. A new determination came over him, and he stood up straight, shaking slightly. I am a Saiyan warrior, and I will not be beaten by this green creature. My amnesiac, ill-trained, long-lost brother can stand up to fight. He clenched his fists. Why shouldn't I? He started taking steps forward, becoming more confident with each step. Kakarot! Stand aside! Huh? Goku looked around, seeing his brother on his feet. Raditz! You okay? Before Raditz could respond, Piccolo appeared out of the dust cloud, looking a little worse for wear. He kicked, Goku's, he kicked Goku to the ground with ease, and batted Tien aside with the back of his hand. The game is over! Piccolo snarled, charging his energy around both hands. Go ahead and try to dodge, he smirked. If you don't think you're strong enough to survive it, that is. What? Are you deaf? I am part of the most powerful race in the universe. Are you still calling me weak? No Reddits! Goku shouted, but Piccolo stamped down on his back. Don't! Uh, don't listen to him! Get out of the way! Bring it on! Reddits yelled. I can take anything you can throw at me. <laughs> Let's find out! Piccolo brought his hands together, launching an almost pure white key beam. Reddits stood firm in his path as it lanced toward him. There was yet another explosion as the beam hit home, drowning everything out in a burst of light and sound. Goku stared in horror. Raditz had played right into Piccolo's hands, letting his emotions get the better of him. And, trapped under Piccolo's foot, Goku couldn't do anything to help him. The dust began to clear. Something was standing there, but Goku squinted to see through the smoke. It didn't seem right. The outline was different. The smoke blew away revealing Tien, who had stood in front of Raditz with his arms crossed in front of his face, shielding him from the attack. 
What? No way! Damn him! Piccolo was breathing hard. These energy attacks have drained my power, and Raditz is still alive! Tien gasped as his strength failed and fell backwards. Raditz caught him. Why? He asked, not understanding. Why would you do something like this for me? You know I'm the enemy of your whole species! He was shocked, his brother saving him from... His brother saving him was one thing. But this earth... Tien smiled, coughing up. <coughs> because... You're Goku's brother. He's the best guy I know. So... You can't be all bad. Right? His body convulsed. And his eyes closed. Tien! Goku yelled, reaching out a hand in his friend's direction. Hold on! Don't give up! It's too late, Kakarot, Reddit said quietly. He's gone. He laid Tien down on the ground, then stood up, face, turning to face Piccolo. That was a powerful attack. It must have severely drained you. He shifted slowly into a fighting stance. Foolish as it was, Kakarot's friend's courage has finally given me the opportunity to end this battle. It's gone on too long already. Piccolo kicked Goku away, then glared at Raditz. Both of them were injured, blood dripping from small cuts, bruises and scrapes all over their body, clothing torn and armor cracked. It was anyone's guess if Piccolo was still stronger. Raditz launched himself forwards, colliding with Piccolo, and they locked hands, pushing against each other. They struggled, forcing all their power outwards, digging craters with their feet, veins popping out on their foreheads. Piccolo began to push forward, his energy cracking. His, en his crackling energy threatening to overwhelm Raditz. Raditz's knees began to bend, and he was forced down and back. Piccolo started to crush his hands, and small flares of energy bit at Raditz's skin. Images started to flash by in his mind, and his eyes closed, almost resigned to his fate. Saiyans laughing at him, his father dismissing him. Were they right? He was too weak to save himself. He deserved this. Unexpectedly, the images continued, now different. Kakarot, coming to his aid. The Earthling, sacrificing his life. His father, Bardock, again. But now he realized. He saw the look on Bardock's face for what it was. A challenge. The other Saiyans would only be right if he lost. Raditz's eyes snapped open wide. He gritted his teeth, forcing his way to his feet. He reached deep within, finding reserves he never knew he had. Piccolo scowled at him, unable to understand. You can't win! Raditz shouted, pushing with all of his strength, sending Piccolo flying back with a new wave of with a wave of pure force. The demon tumbled through the air, mind reeling, bones shattered. This time, when he hit the floor, he didn't get up. Silence fell. Raditz took a deep breath. It's over. He lurched forward, step by painful step. Coming to a halt in front of Piccolo's coming to a halt in front of Piccolo's prone body. Slowly, he raised a hand. I won't make the same mistake you did. A battle is not won until you have crushed the enemy from. A battle is not won until you have crushed life from your enemy. Before he could strike the final blow, he felt a hand on his shoulder. Stop! Goku ordered him. A dangerous look was back in his eyes. What? Kakarot, are you out of your mind? Nobody else is dying today, Goku stood firm. I won't let you kill him. I don't want to have to use force. But if I did, you don't have enough energy left to fight back. Raditz stood there for an agonizingly long time. Finally, he lowered his hand. Damn you, Kakarot. This world, it's made you soft. He killed your friend, don't you care? Of course I do! But on Earth, we have these things called Dragon Balls. We can use them to grant any wish, like bringing the dead back to life. You... You could have any wish? You could be immortal! You could have unlimited power, and you only think of him? Raditz asked, shocked. Seemingly from nowhere, a harsh voice spoke. Any wish, you say? Immortality? Unlimited power? It chuckled. Goku realized it was coming from Raditz's scouter. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Raditz scolded. Vegeta. 
Thanks for your continued support, everybody. Anyway, you should probably read Bringer of Death and Honor Trip if you haven't already. You can find them both on this site. Just one question to answer today. Wondering how Goku is... I'm wondering how strong Goku is now. Just as strong as he was at the start of DBZ. In fact, just for quick reference, at this point, everyone's favorite thing. Power levels! Goku, 416. Tien, 250. Piccolo, 1800. Raditz, 1500. So, finally, we're through this first battle. I plan to continue this indefinitely, and if it, come, and if it becomes popular, huh? I may even get through the whole DBZ timeline. Thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to tune in next time for chapters 4 through 6. See you next time.